Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we are on the fourth episode of the Endless Runner series. Today we look at the user interface and how to change it through scripting. But before we do that, let's actually fix a bug that I forgot in the latest episode. Let's go to our game manager. Let's go to our start game manager and open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so in here we make sure that the game doesn't start before we want to. The problem is, if the game is already started, we don't want this script to do anything. So simply put, in here, in the start game function, after we started the game, we want to say enabled equals false. This way, after the game starts, this script doesn't work anymore because it's disabled. Without this bug fix, the game would actually keep on starting every time we touch the screen, as in here. Okay, so let's go to the actual episode of today. I want to give the option to restart the game to the player when they lose. To do so, we'll use a button. So let's go to a hierarchy, right click, UI, and here we have button and button text mesh pro. Let's click on button text mesh pro, and Unity is going to ask us to import text mesh pro assets. Text Mesh Pro is an add-up on the natural text of Unity. Let's click Import and Import again. And we are done. So let's close this. Let's go back to your project. And as you can see now, we have a folder called Text Mesh Pro. We don't need to actually do anything inside of this folder. It's already been installed. If you look at our hierarchy now, we have a canvas and a button. And inside this button, we also have a text. And as you can see, it's also tagged as a TMP. The first time that you make a UI object, together with the canvas, you also spawn an event system. You don't really need to touch it, so let's leave it like that. Text Mesh Pro gives us a lot of useful uh, info and tools on how to modify our text, but let's go in order. The first thing that we added was a canvas, because when we make a UI object, like a text or a button, we always have to put it inside a canvas. And when we make a canvas, the first thing I want to do is make sure that it's adjusted to our screen size. So we select our canvas and we go to UI scale mode and we'll set it from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And then we use the same size of our game size. So in my case, I'm using my Samsung portrait, which is 360 times 725. So in my canvas, I also put 360, 725. Down below, there's a value called match, which we want to pass through to the highest parameter. So if we're playing a game in a portrait mode, like Boat Venture, where the Y is the highest, we want to put our match from 0 to 1. And this should scale a bit better the game when we play it on the phone. Of course, this is not the only thing that you have to do, but it's a good start. We also want to check the pixel perfect checkbox in here to make sure that our text is rendered properly. I actually want to change something while we're here. Right now, our game can go in landscape mode if we flip our phone, but we don't want that because the game will look really weird. So let's go to our project settings. Let's go to player. And under the Android tab, we go to resolution and presentation. And in here, we can change which option are supported. In this case, we want portrait, portrait upside down, but we don't want the landscapes. So we remove this. Okay, so now let's go back to a button, double click to focus on it. We want to move it a bit in the center. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's also change names. So we call it restart button and restart text. And in here we say play again. Okay, but right now our text is actually outside of the button, as you can see. To reset it, we can just go in the transform and set all these values to zero, like so. Okay, so now we want to press auto size, and this way the text tries to stay inside the button. So if we select our button and try to scale it, the text adjusts automatically, okay? But now let's actually change a couple of things to make this button a bit prettier. So we go into text and we set the max value to be 100. So if we scale the button a lot, it tries to stay on track. We also change the color, make it uh, pitch black. And we also want to change the font. So under font asset, we select the circle at the end. We press it and you can choose our font. 
so I'll go with bangers. And we also want to add a bit of margin to our text because right now it's touching the button itself. So in here, in extra settings, we click and to margin, we add five to the left and five to the right. Uh, actually, let's add a bit more to the right because this type of font is actually already in uh, italic. So it kind of goes a bit too much on the right. So we go five to the left and 10 to the right. And uh, this looks good. And now we want to make it so that when we press this button, an event triggers on our script so that we restart the game. Before we do that, let's actually add another text. So we go to Canvas, Text, Text Mesh Pro. I will call it You Lost Text. And we move this here. We say You Lost. We change it to a good font. We'll align it in the center. We'll put it in out of size and we'll increase the size a bit. So like so. Then we can also change it back to the X to zero. So in the center. Okay, so now we want to do something called anchoring. Anchoring means putting the starting position of something to a specific location. In this case, we want the anchoring position of our you lost text to be at the top because it's the closest starting points. We want to anchor our UI because if we play on a different size, if we play on a different resolution, then our UI can adjust to fit that specific size. Okay, to, to anchor, it's really simple. We just go to this box right here, we open, and we select which position we want to specify. In this case, the top center. Okay, and if we go back to a restart button, we'll center the position, and in this case, since the button is in the center position, we'll just leave the anchor to be in the center. Okay, so now we want this text and this button to appear when we lose. To do so, we'll group these two objects inside a panel. So we go to Canvas, New, UI, Panel. A panel is an object that is usually used in UI to group different pieces together. In this case, we want to piece our Restart button and our lost text. So we'll just select these two and we'll put them inside. And as you can see, at the moment that we put them together, the button and the text appear on top of the panel. So the panel won't interfere with our clicking or touching. Let's rename our panel to be Game Over Panel. And now we can just disable or enable this panel when we lose. Also, panels don't anchor to a point they stretch, because we want this panel to occupy the entirety of the screen. So in here, as you can see, the anchor point is set to stretch on every angle. We don't actually have to change anything. Okay, so let's go back to our game manager. Let's go to finish game manager. And in here, we want a reference to our panel. To do that, we can just use game object. So let's write serious field, private, game object, game over panel. And when we finish the game, we want to enable this panel. So game over panel dot set active true. Let's go back to Unity and let's link our game over panel in here. Okay, so now we want to make it so that if we press this button, the game restarts. To do so, let's go back to our finish game manager and let's make a new function. So we'll write public void restart game. And to link this function to the button, it's really simple. We just go back to Unity, we select our button, we go down and here on click event, list is empty, we want to make a new event, we link our game manager, and we'll say finish game manager, restart game. Make sure that our function is public, otherwise you won't be able to see it in this event list. Okay, and in here we want to add the logic to restart the game. To do so, we have to add a new library, so we say using unity engine dot scene management. And this is a library that allows us to move throughout the scenes because when we restart the game, we just re uploading the same scene that we are in it. Okay, so in restart game, we say scene manager dot load scene. And in here, we want to say the scene that we want to load. Now, normally you can just use an index, so zero, and it loads the first scene in the scene builder, which in our case, if we go back to Unity, file, build settings, the first scene, so the one with the build index zero, is the one and only scene that we have. So we could just write zero in here, but let's say that we add another scene 
and this is not the first scene anymore, this is not the scene with a zero index anymore, we want to make sure that we're actually picking the scene that we are in right now. To do so, let's remove the zero and we say scene manager dot get active scene. And we say build index. So we're asking the scene manager to load us in and the number of the scene that we want is the scene that we are in right now and we are picking the build index of that scene. This is a bit hard to remember, but don't worry. Okay, but before we move on, we have to actually make another modification that is our time scale. Because time.timescale is a static value of our Unity game. That means if we restart the game as is right now, when we lose the time scale set to zero, but simply restarting a scene won't restart the time scale. So before we load the scene, we say time.timescale equals one. And that's it. If you go to Unity, we disable our game over panel and we hit play. When we hit a rock, the game over panel pops up and if we press play again, the game starts again. Perfect. Okay, while we're here, let's also make a new text object. So let's go to our canvas. Let's make new UI text mesh pro. And this will be our yards count or the meters or kilometers that you have traveled. So we call it yards text. I feel that yards are more uh, pirate esque. And we say zero YD for abbreviation. Let's also make it a bit prettier. Okay, don't forget to anchor it on the top. And now we want to make a new script and we call it yards manager. Okay, and before we open it, let's actually make a bit of organization in here. Okay, uh, let's go to Visual Studio. Okay, so in our Yards Manager, we want to measure how long we have to travel. So we need first a reference to Yards text, and then a value that holds how long we have played. So let's remove a bit of things. Okay, and we write serialized field private. I want to reference our text mesh pro text. To do so, we have to use a new library and that is using TM Pro. And now in here, there are a lot of text mesh Pro classes that we can reference. The one that we want ends with U GUI. Instead of writing the entire name, which is really complicated, you can just write U G and it appears. Text mesh Pro U GUI. I will call it Yards Text. Okay, next thing that I want is a private value that holds our yards. So we say private float yards travel. And in our update, we want to increase this value and set our yards text to be equal to our yards travel. So we say yards travel plus equals time dot delta time. And then yards text dot text equals. And with dot text, we're actually modifying the text of the UGUI. And we say yards travel plus yd, as in yards abbreviated. Okay, and if we go back to Unity, let's add our Yards Manager script and let's link our Wii UGUI. And if we hit play, the moment that we start playing, the Yards go up. But there are two problems. First, the Yards go up before we even start playing. Second, we don't want to see all of this stuff, we only want to see the entire units. This is too messy. Okay, so to fix the decimal point problem, it's really easy. We just want to cast this value from float to integer. So we write parentheses int. This way, we're not modifying the value, we're just reading it in another data type. We want to have it float because we're adding it to time .delta time, which uses decimal point, but we want to read it only with entire numbers. The other problem is making sure that the yards go up only when we're actually playing. To do so, let's make a new value and we'll call it private bool is traveling and in our update we say if is not traveling return so if your if this value is false then this code won't be executed because we are returning the function we also want to set is traveling to true when we start the game so we make a new function i will call it public void start script and in here we simply say is traveling equals true 
Okay, and now if you connected the dots, we just want to go in our start game manager and at the start of the game call the start script function. To do so, we actually have to make a singleton. If you don't remember to make a singleton, we just go at the start of a class and we say public static the name of the class, so regards manager, and uh, usually it's called instance. And then on awake, we say instance equals this. Okay, so now let's go to our start game manager. And in here, in our start game function, we want to add a new start script. So we say yards manager dot instance dot start script. And if we go back to Unity and we hit play, as you can see, the yards don't move, but if we press play, it starts going up. And if we hit a rock, the yards stop going up because if the time is zero, time dot dot time is also zero. And if you play again, we can play again. Another slight problem though is that our yards are actually going really, really slow. To fix this, we can actually just go in our yards manager script and instead of just adding time.delta time to our yards travel, we can say time.delta times times five. Okay, and if we save and hit play, okay, much better. You can of course adjust the speed at which time.delta time is multiplied to make the game feel faster or slower to, for the score, making it so that the time.delta time is multiplied by a smaller value makes it harder to reach a certain yard score, but it's your own choice. Okay, so thank you for watching. In the next episode, we'll look at high score, how to make save files, and also how to add score to our prayer. If you have any doubts, tell me in the comments. And I'll see you in the next episode.